My name is Ash. Two months ago, in July 2021, I came out as queer. Queer can mean a lot of things. Uh, so I want to just lay out what it means for me. For me, queer basically means uh, I'm not straight, and it means that I don't fit within the binary of male or female. I'm attracted to lots of different genders, and my own experience of gender is fluid. I'm not straight. I'm not a man. I'm queer. Uh, I grew up in rural Minnesota. I was super conservative. I was probably the most conservative person I knew. I was Pat Buchanan conservative. Here's my unironic senior high school picture. I'm dressed up like an American flag. Uh, those jeans are oh so tight. And that should have been my first clue that I was queer. This image is, to me, the most closeted queer thing I've ever seen in my life, and I've seen a lot. But I didn't know I was queer. My queerness wasn't some big secret that I kept from people. Part of the story you hear is that if you're gay, you knew when you were a little kid and you kept it a secret your whole life. Or if you thought you were trans or you didn't fit your gender that you were assigned at birth that uh, you kind of knew all along and you kept it secret. I literally didn't know until a couple months ago that I was queer. I covered it with all sorts of rationalizings and understandings and philosophies that just made it hard. But I got to a point where I couldn't hide from it anymore. I couldn't rationalize things anymore. And now looking back, I see all kinds of clues and indicators. Things clicked into place. But growing up as a fundamentalist in rural Minnesota, getting married when I was 21, uh, it kind of locked me in. I thought, this is just who I am now. And so anything that, any feelings I had that it didn't click or fit, I just chalked up to mental health, mental illness, or just the plight of humanity the waywardness of our souls, the fallenness in, that we experience in our sin. And I've always had a sense of dysphoria. Dysphoria, the way I'm using it here, is just the sense that your body doesn't make sense with who you are. And so we talk about gender dysphoria, but I thought my dysphoria, anything I had, was because I was big and bearded and and... I felt like I should be manly and I didn't feel manly. I felt like a wuss, people might say. I was always sensitive and kind of into more girly type things. Um, people joke that I'd make a better wife than a husband. You know, nothing that's, there's nothing particularly feminine about liking cooking or being into uh, interior design or whatever. But like I couldn't make myself do manly things well. Um, so there was some of that, but it was also I was really overweight. So there's pictures of me, uh, big and bearded. And there's nothing wrong with fatness. But I felt this body shame. And, it, you know, for me personally, it wasn't healthy. I didn't have a lot of physical health going for me at the time. And so I never felt comfortable in my own skin. And so I chalked up any discomfort with just bigness and fatness or that generalized shame that I think a lot of us feel because we don't fit into this toxic world. We're maladapted to live in a shitty society. A couple years ago, I had bariatric surgery uh, and I lost a lot of weight. And in May, I started running, training for a half marathon. And I started having, in a lot of ways, more of a conventionally handsome Viking-esque physique that I was told I was supposed to have. The only thing left was I have this kind of flabby skin around my middle that I'm getting removed in November. So as I became more conventionally handsome, handsomer anyways, I realized that my struggle wasn't simply with weight, and it wasn't even with living up to a masculine ideal. During the pandemic, I built this office shed with the help of friends. I redecorated a kitchen. I did, you know, and I 
I did things that seemed kind of like manly things, like not that I was setting out to do them to be manly, but I felt accomplished. But I still had this dysphoric feeling that things weren't right. That I wasn't living up to a masculine ideal in some way, and I realized that it's because I'm not really masculine at all. The idea of masculinity doesn't even make sense to me. I'm genderqueer. I'm non-binary. I have a strong sense that I never really fit in as a man. Even though I can think of myself as a brother to people I'm close to, or a dad to my son, it doesn't fit into the category of manness to me. And I've had queer friends, though, so... You know, you think, well, gee, you know, hanging around with queer people should make it e obvious if you're queer. And I've had t very close, I have very close trans friends. And I tried to be a good ally to them for years. I felt that this was especially important for me to do because I'm a religious leader of sorts. I went to a Bible college. I went to seminary. Uh, after seminary, I studied Christian mysticism and spirituality. And I'm currently doing a doctor of ministry program. So I'm like, a professional Christian. And since religion, particularly Christianity in our context, um, has directly fed a sort of toxic patriarchy that has birthed heteronormativity and transphobia and made things so toxic for queer folks, I felt like it was my responsibility to be a good ally. Ironically, it was being a good ally that's part of the reason why it took me so long to realize I was queer. Uh, many queer folks understand that gender is a social construct, that gender is performative, that gender identity and expression exists on a spectrum. In a way, everyone is kind of queer because having your gender identity and gender expression fit perfectly with the gender you were assigned at birth, which then presumably lines up perfectly with your biological sex, things don't line up perfectly all the way down for most of us. Nobody's gender is entirely male or female. And biologically speaking, male and female aren't as dominant as we think either. This shit is complicated. And because of that, anything in my identity or expression uh, that didn't line up with being a good male specimen was just part of what I thought my new normal was. The same goes for attraction. Hardly anyone is purely heterosexual, especially when we understand that attraction can be sexual Attraction can be romantic. Attraction can be aesthetic. Attraction isn't some sort of simple binary. And so if I was attracted to different bodies and different gender identities and gender expressions in different ways, that was normal too. Because it's all normal. And in my mind, normal is being a cisgender heterosexual man. I was just a cisgender heterosexual man who was complicated. So I saw it until I couldn't see it that way anymore. Interestingly, and transgressively, it all started to unravel because of Jesus. Here's a post I wrote on the 4th of July, of all, of all days of days. I wrote, Adam wasn't male until a rib was removed to make a female. One could say that before Eve, Adam was intersex. And since he was a species of one, he was likely uh, both male and female, while also being neither male nor female. I believe it is a mistake to assume that Adam was male in both biology and gender expression, and that he was heterosexual. Those are assumptions we bring to the text. Jesus says the second Adam may have been biologically male, I can't really know for sure, but as the quote-unquote firstborn from the dead, according to Revelation 1-4, he has a resurrected body that no, likely no longer conforms to any sort of biological sex. And though he was masculine presenting, it's harder to, imagine, to, harder to argue the same for the risen Jesus. Furthermore, since we read in Matthew 22, 30 that, quote-unquote, at the resurrection people will neither mar marry nor be given in marriage, they will be like the angels in heaven, uh, Jesus' sexuality has become even queerer. Jesus went from being single and possibly asexual to entering into a polyamorous relationship with the sum totality of the body of Christ, his bride, who is made up of every gender, sex, and sexual orientation. Adam was, at least initially, queer, and Jesus queerer still. 
and we as the body of Christ participate in that queerness and all of its emerging glory. <laughs> that post came about as a reflection paper I was writing for my liberation theology class in my doctoral program. It all seemed pretty simple to me, still does, and it's actually really unoriginal. Conservative rabbis have been grappling with the issue of Adam's gender since at least the Middle Ages. Since Genesis says God created man as male and female in one account of the creation of humanity, and in the other account only Adam is initially created, they believe that the most conservative reading of the text is to believe that Adam was created androgynous, or with both sexes. Other scholars have suggested that Adam was initially created with the fullness of the gender spectrum. And Christian mystics throughout the ages have experienced Jesus in erotic and queer ways. None of this is new. But the pushback I got on the post stirred up deep emotions in me. I felt like I was not only defending Jesus, <laughs> but also myself. And I had to ask why I was getting so bent out of shape about it. And so I embraced my own queerness because of the queerness of Jesus. Take that, you fucking fundamentalists. And so I came out as queer. The general reaction to my coming out as genderqueer has been supportive. Of course, it upset some folks, too. I posted some rather tame pictures with me wearing makeup, like, uh, I'm just trying to learn makeup. I'm not great at it. I think I'm doing pretty good for a newbie, a baby queer. But people see pictures like this, and they go, oh, gross. Uh, so I grossed out some Christian dudes. Others accused me of being individualistic. Others <laughs> accused me, and if you know me at all, you know why I think this is funny, of being shaped by hyper-capitalist tendencies towards self-worship. Of course, a few folks just accused me of being apostate and whatever. And of course, there are other ter the TERFs out there. I'm not going to get into what a TERF is. Uh, I'll maybe have a link below for that. But many supportive folks have responded in ways that seem to suggest that they just see me as a liberated dude, a liberated guy. That my queerness is simply philosophical. That I'm just a man who feels freer to do whatever the hell he wants. And every time I've heard that or felt that vibe, it's agitated my soul. And eventually, again, I had to ask why it bothers me so much to be perceived that way. It's because even though I'm non-binary, I'm primarily feminine, which is hard for people to get. I have broad shoulders, my baritone voice. I've got, you know, pretty strong-looking features, kind of. I don't know. I don't think I'm nubby-looking. So people code that as masculine. Gender is a tricky concept, especially for gender-fluid folks, but it is increasingly clear to me and a few of my discernment partners, people I'm processing this all with, that I need to anchor myself primarily in a more feminine way of presenting myself to the world, to the point of maybe even passing as a woman, which I'm not sure is really possible for me. Uh, generally speaking, the younger you are when you transition, the more passable you can be. That's a whole big topic. Whether even it's worth doing being passable as a goal is a controversial topic. But it's what I've decided. And so here I am. I'm trans-feminine. I'm transitioning towards a gender expression that many would consider to be a trans woman, although I don't want to use the term trans woman to describe myself. But certainly trans-feminine. And the distinction is lost on most people. So this video is a coming out, but it's also a declaration of intent. My coming out as queer was strange enough for folks, but transitioning to a feminine gender expression as someone assigned male at birth puts me at a bigger risk and freaks people out more. Trans women experience a unique and particularly violent sort of social disapproval. So this isn't some flippant and easy little decision for me. I am transitioning. And we'll begin with hormone therapy. Uh, but that only does so much for someone assigned male at birth. Body fat shifts around, some breast growth happens. 
body hair thins out, subtle shifts. Um, most, the biggest experiences generally have to do with kind of a, more of a inside feeling, mental health. The voice doesn't get higher. Beard doesn't go away. My balding hair doesn't just start sprouting out. So I'll need a fundraise for things like vocal training to sound more feminine, for facial hair removal, for hair transplants so I can have a full head of hair. These things aren't covered by insurance because they're seen as cosmetic. And these sorts of therapies and procedures bring up all sorts of strong emotions for folks who see trans feminine people as particularly self-indulgent or transgressive. <laughs> what the fuck? But for trans feminine people, this stuff isn't simply about looking sassy and sexy, although there's nothing wrong with that. It's about having the ability to go into social situations without scrutiny and fear. Being able to pass when needed is a matter of life and death. The sassy and sexy part matters too, because being able to present to the world in a way that reflects who you are is important. Nevertheless, I recognize that my social presence is a privilege. It's part of why I'm making this video. It's not just a declaration of intent that I'm transitioning and I need some support along the way. But I want to carve out space for a deeper conversation. Any money that comes in through fundraising or if for some reason, like I make videos and people watch them a lot and I get money that way, whatever, at least 25% of everything that comes in will be go, going towards trans folks with less social privilege than I have. So trying to figure that out. And if I get to the point where my transition costs are covered and the 25% still kind of come in, then all of it will go towards something that helps the cause. I feel a particular burden to make space, particularly within religious space, particularly within Jesus-y religious space, to talk about queerness and trans stuff. I'm a baby queer, but I've been an ally for a long, for a long time, and not many people start transitioning when they're in their middle age, when they're middle-aged after accumulating uh, a lot of theological education and having at least a small public platform with which they can talk about things. So I'm going to use the platform. I'm going to use my education even if it means becoming a bit of a target, because I feel like I'm better equipped to engage the fuckers than younger queers who experience things like homelessness and violence and abuse at higher rates than anybody else. This is a conversation we need to have in church spaces. So this video is a declaration, not just of my transmission, but out of, of my intention to be very public, very vocal, and very spiritual about my transition. I want to transgress religious bigotry, encourage young gender queers, and nurture holy queering, which I'll talk about in upcoming videos. So in, which I've, in coming weeks, I'm going to launch a bunch of these videos. Transitioning can take years. So for years, I'll be chronicling my transi transition and be employing it as a lens for understanding my faith and engaging the kind of faith we need to have that's liberatory in our world today. I'm calling this series Faith in Transition. It's a little bit on the nose, but hey, I'm that kind of person. People need to know that queerness is part of God's image, but even more, it's a gift that the, the insights from queering are necessary for our world to, to, to transition into something life-giving. I'm going to supplement these longer videos with short videos, probably also on YouTube, using YouTube Shorts, where I engage in particular questions. So longer exposition videos, short little Q&A videos. So keep your eye out for those videos, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and support my transition if you can.
My name is Ash. I use they, them pronouns. I love Jesus, and I'm transitioning.